should Simon Armour be used in one of the all-rounder slots in the South African test side going forward? Uh, that's what we're going to be discussing on today's show. There has been a lot of discussion about this, particularly because of Vian Mulder's performance recently. Um, and in that number seven position, we've been looking for all-rounders for quite some time. Simon Armour has shown what he's capable of the, with the ball, but he also showed signs of it with the bat. So we're going to be discussing this and seeing how we can balance out the side and whether it would be um, viable for us to use Simon Armour as an all-rounder going forward, in no matter what the conditions are, etc. So that's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. If you're new to this channel and this is the first time that you've joined, please smash the, the like button, comment, share, and also please subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos as well. Also, don't forget to download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. Every issue is 100% free straight to your inbox every single month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. Uh, I hope people are not tapping on the screen. Um, it's, it's not an active link, obviously, on the screen. So please go to the, the link in the description to find it. But if you guys want it manually, it is on the screen as well for you there. Uh, you can also become a patron today. The link is on the screen as well, again, as in the description. A lot of people have been asking us about our Patreon, um, where, where they can sign up and what they can do. I've sent you guys the link now so you guys can go ahead and check it out. Hopefully you guys do sign up and not just look at the, the different um, <laughs> the different tiers. Actually sign up and, and, and join us and, and support us. But we, we're going to be chatting about all of this on today's show. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the live chat. Um, I don't want you guys just to answer the question because I made it a simple question, yes, so that we can get engagement um, around the topic. But I'm hoping that you guys will give reasons for your answers and not just say yes to the answer or no to the answer. I would like, to the, sorry, to the question. I would like you guys to obviously give reasons on why you think it should happen or why you think it shouldn't happen. So let's get straight into today's content. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this. We won't only talk about this. We'll talk about other things too if you guys raise any questions in the live chat as well and i will answer it too without but let's get straight into today's video Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ticket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Harley Maiden, and this is the show where we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket. And I've picked out one that I think has surfaced over the last couple of days, particularly because of the 220 run win over Bangladesh in the first test. There's been a lot of question marks over certain positions in the side, whether South Africa should maybe um, play an extra batter in that number seven slot instead of Vian Mulder, seeing that they basically only bowled. Um, with a total with with they didn't use all their bowlers um in the throughout the test series um effectively i feel from a south african point of view uh they never used mold as much as i thought they would other than that the only guys that 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 bowled more than 15 overs was duan olifir lazard william simon armor and keshav maharaj so ultimately we only really used four bowlers um dean alga bowled an over as well as vian Mulder bowled an over but uh, for four overs, sorry, and took a wicket. But I think that there was a point in the match where we thought that Vian Mulder wouldn't be used at all. And I think there was a lot of concerns from South African fans thinking, why is he in the side if he's not being used to the ball? Especially because he was identified as a bowler by Otis Gibson, more of a bowling all-rounder by Otis Gibson, where a lot of us fans know him as a, as a batting all-rounder. But that number seven position has been something that has been vacant for quite some time now. Now, Vernie Philander held, held that position for, for some time as well. And he did pretty well there, scoring quite a bit of runs in test cricket. But a genuine, genuine all-rounder, it has been a struggle. Now, people have been calling for maybe someone like Dwayne Pretorius to come into the side, into the test side. There was a, a period where he was in the test squad, but it was never really used properly. Um, there are some other all-rounders around in domestic cricket, but currently, it seems to be that they have been focusing on Vian Mulder. Now, Vian Mulder doesn't necessarily look like he's been comfortable with the bat. 
And I think that maybe domestic cricket will, will, will uh, a long period of domestic cricket, a good full season of domestic cricket might help Vian try and understand his batting game a lot better because I think that's where he's struggling. And until he gets that, because I don't think Vian can be picked as a bowler alone, uh, in my opinion. I think there are other bowlers over here that are in the squad that I feel could possibly eclipse him in the lineup when you're talking about bowlers. So, I mean, Lazard Williams coming in on his debut and obviously bowling far more overs because we expect that from a of a from a bowler, specialist bowler. So if Vian Mulder is not a specialist bowler and they don't see him as a specialist bowler, then he has to be an all-rounder, but that means then that his batting needs to be in order. We we criticize so many other players um, for not being able to hold the bat, even though they are all-rounders and even though they are bowling all-rounders. So the same criticism should go Vian Mulder's way. But I do think that his age, and I do think that at the age that he is at currently, that maybe it's not as... Um, um, important to stress about it, and I don't think he should stress about it either. I just think he needs to go back to domestic cricket and just find his form again. So, the, based on Simon Harmer's first innings, where he scored 38, he looked really good, and he was very, very crucial to help South Africa get over the 300 run mark, especially getting to three over the 350 mark. And um, it's interesting to see that that he was that he batted until the end. Um, unfortunately, ran out of partners. We could have had a lot more in the first innings. If Simon was at the crease, he, he he looked really good with the bat and he looked like he could hold a bat um, pretty well. So, so that South Africa are going to be in a, in a situation where we have to inform spinners that look like they will be able to contribute no matter what the conditions are. We saw how Simon Armour, how good he was in England. So I think he will be a complete asset to us in England, specifically when we're playing away. He knows the conditions well. He played county cricket. Obviously, he was a cold pack, so he understands the 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 conditions. He understands the players. He can understands the competition. He understands the weather. There's so much that he understands about it that will help South Africa. But if he can hold his bat the way he has been in this particular series so far or this match so far, I think that that could be an option at number seven. Now, we need to fill in the other roles and we have to probably work backwards. So, if you have number 11 as as your seamer, like Lungingidi, then you've got your your um, other bowlers as well, like Andrik Nokia. He can come in at 10. And then you've got your Kaki Sorabada, who can come in at 9. You've got Keshav Maharaj that can come in at 8. And then you've got Simon Harmer that can come in at 7. That's five bowlers, three seamers, two spinners. And I think that's a very lethal attack um if you look at it um that that team should be able to bowl out almost any team in in in, in cricket bowling with five bowlers seems to be something that south africa have been very good at you at, at winning test matches only with five bowlers in the past so that it has been possible and as we have seen it in the past and it, and it could be a, a a position that simon armor could hold in the near future until we find a better solution for that issue I think he is a good stopgap right now in that position, particularly with the way him and, and, and Keshav are almost like a... <laughs> if they fuse, they'd be the ultimate spinner. Um, but um, as a partnership, they are, are the perfect spin, spin duo, duo for South Africa. So it's very important that we, we continue that form and we continue that momentum. But Ashwa Prince also had a lot to say about this and he actually suggested that South Africa do this. And, and that was... That was big from Ashwell, who in the past, of course, he's been um, he's been someone that has that has had his his issues with Simon in the past. We've seen competitiveness between the two sides when the, he was still at the Warriors, um, and they played against Western Province. There were a couple of heated words um, that that were exchanged between the two teams back then when I used to watch them when crowds were still allowed in back before COVID. Um, so. But for Ashwell to say that, it, it means a lot because that means he, he really looked at his batting and maybe saw something in it that he could possibly hold that role. Because, I mean, he looks very mature, like he understands his game as a batter, whereas Vian Mulder is still trying to find that. Uh, so I do think time at the Lions for Vian Mulder will do him a world of good. I would even maybe suggest that he moves to a franchise that's maybe lacking a number four, number five, no, sorry, a number five batter um, that needs a batter that can bowl in that number five slot. Maybe that would be a good move for, 
for Vienna as well, maybe testing him. Maybe he needs to go to a, a, an area or a place where where there are a little bit more spin tracks, maybe like the Warriors or, or, or Dolphins or one of those type of, of teams where he can be picked on a regular basis in the top order because I think that's what he needs to do. Um, so I do think that he needs to go back. Maybe VP Blitz, there's a, there's a potential opportunity maybe there maybe. Um, there are all rounders at, at at VP currently, like my um, like Mahlali Mapungwana, who's an excellent excellent all rounder. I really enjoy watching him play. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what what Boucher and the, and and the, and, the, and the coaching staff do, and if Boucher is still look he's, he's no longer the coach. What the new coach will decide um, when he comes in. So I don't I don't um, disagree with this idea. I don't. I'm not against this idea. I understand why they would, why they have why there has been discussions about it. Let's just have a look and and see what you guys have had, had to say on Facebook. So I've I have put this particular um the the image on 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 social media, so on Instagram as well as on on Facebook. So let me just have a look quickly to see what you guys have been saying on the image, um, because the question was posed and some people commented. Uh, so I'll just read out your comments. So. NMU Cricket says yes. <laughs> um, Usain Murchi says yes, definitely. We should look at including him in all formats as an all-rounder. I'm not sure about the all formats factor. I think Simon suits the longer format a lot better um, than the shorter formats, in my opinion. I don't think I'll pick him as an all-rounder in all formats. I think that in, in white ball cricket, I think George Linder should be ahead of him, in, in, in my opinion. Um, Jakob Barnard saying, why not? You know, why not select Simon Armour as an all-rounder? Let's look at Facebook and what you guys have to say there too. Um, just to have a, a look at some of the diverse opinions that have been happening. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll get to your comments in the live chat very soon. Let me just refresh. Am I even connected to the right Wi-Fi here, guys? Okay, um, so... When you need it to be fast. Okay, there's been a couple of comments over here. We've had Naidu Vision saying he can only play the all-rounder role when Janssen doesn't play. We can't have both. That's a good, interesting point. Let's start there. So when Janssen's available, what happens then? Do we go with Simon still? Does is Simon ahead of 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 Marco Janssen? Marco Janssen's put on a good performance with the bat too. He's shown his capabilities with the bat, and that's where I will start is thinking about it really truly thinking about it because not only does marco jansen have decent pace he's a left on hander that he, he bowls left-handed and he swings the ball quite a bit he moves the ball he gets bounced he has he's, he's, he's growing as a bowler but he's also starting to find his rhythm with a bat too so that is a very good point when right now i feel that it's a good option and maybe for england it's a good option um seeing that He's been there already. But if the if the pitches are going to swing and are going to move around, then maybe two spinners in England are not a, is not a good idea. It depends on what venue we're going to play. And But there has been arguments for Simon Armour to play no matter what conditions. So that's something that we want to obviously discuss over here and, and I want to see what you guys have to say. To see the diverse opinions of what all fans have to say about this particular thing. And it has been divided. We've got Timothy Devi saying yes. Um, he should. We've got um, Mtunzi Dlovo saying absolutely the guy did good in both innings. He did all right in the second innings. He got run out. Um, Patrick Langa saying absolute madness and desperation in my opinion. Let's stop trying to force and and then missing out on extra set of proven skills. Harmer is no proven all-rounder already at his age. Now I do vision saying exactly and agreeing with that. Um, Then we've got Eugene K. Aronson saying, many won't agree with me, but put Mulder under pressure. Let him bat five. One never knows what it might produce. So that might be an interesting point for the Bangladesh game. I wouldn't I wouldn't maybe test that at the international level when we need to win a match. match. I think domestically, he can bat five more, more regularly, and I think that would be the right decision for him. I'm not so 100% sure that 
moving in at five at test level when he's been struggling at seven is going to do him a world of good. I think putting extra pressure on him is the last thing we should do. I think there was enough pressure on him in the first test. He knew he was under pressure. You could see it in his face when he went out, how distraught he was both times. So I don't want to put extra pressure on a youngster like that and, and, and let him crumble even, even further. Then we've got Abida Kaha saying, yes, he should be in the team as an all-rounder. So there have been some angry people, some happy people with this question, but I had to ask it. So let's see what you guys have to say. Let's start right at the top. I'll be saying six batsmen and five Janssen, Harmer, Maharaj, KG, Nokia, a deal side. So dropping Lungi and Giri in this particular occasion. Yes, he should um, play as an all-rounder at the team instead of Markram or Mulder. Vishal saying both Harmer and Janssen are no, on no, number eight at best. Seems fine as a stopgap. Um, arrangement to bat one of these at seven but this one work in the long term and that's where i do agree i think that simon armor right now would work here as a stopgap until we find the all-rounder that that is the all-rounder to be for the future now there are a couple of ones knocking a little bit on the on the gate i would say not on the door quite yet um they we're currently looking them through the through the camera or through the people because I don't think that, that they're necessarily ready yet. We've got Jason Smith available that's doing pretty well at the Dolphins. Maybe not as well as we were hoping. We were really hoping that he was going to be much more consistent than he was. He's shown flashes of brilliance. Um, got Ruben de Swart as well, who I'm a big fan of. I've watched him play for quite some time he actually gave up playing rugby to be a cricketer so i'm hoping that it works out for him he was a very talented rugby player as well we've got um bryce parsons who's a top order batter that bowls that's another option down the line um you've got the likes of um ayak kamani he's another person playing well at the titans currently uh you've got uh um the likes of Mapungwana that I've already mentioned already, who, who's doing well at the VP Blitz, um, particularly in the four-day arena. And you've got, perhaps you could go with someone like Vian Mulder, who's, who can bat top order as well um, and can add a couple of overs as well. I'm not so sold on him in, in necessarily with a ball in four-day cricket, but you'll probably message me and kill me and say, what are you talking about, Harley? You haven't watched me bowl enough. So I don't want to keep that as a foolproof um, reason, um, but yeah, there are quite a f there are quite a few that that, that we can think of. Michal Pretorius, Jeru Kutsia, those are number eights that you're looking at. Simon Armas is number seven. He's a bit dangerous. I mean, at right now, I would probably go with an extra batter at this point um, for the next test, uh, putting put some good runs on the board over there, and I think this this team can can bowl out opposition. We've got Aditya here with us, guys. He came, um, even though it's late there. <laughs> Welcome to the show, bro. So, oh, thank you, how, brother. Thank you. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Eh? Uh, my heartbeat's at like 120. I've just seen a blockbuster <laughs> IPL game. And I, I'm, I'm too excited. I can't sleep. <laughs> 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 Good that you're on here. Okay, so now we know, guys, with the with the IPL is on and 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 Aditya has invested in the game, that we know you'll come on the show. <laughs> uh, but Riska Adams is so underrated. He is very underrated. He is very underrated. I agree with you, um, Iceman. But Aditya, I've read out quite a few comments about this particular topic. I asked this question to people and on social media as well as on obviously Instagram. You put it out there, and. Um, we got quite a few responses and I've read it out already. It's been split. What is your thoughts on this? Um, I've said, I don't know if you heard what I said, but I think maybe as a stopgap for now, maybe until Marco until Marco comes back and or until um, another all-rounder puts up his hand or until Vian Mulder's ready. I don't think that, that Simon Armour as a permanent number seven for the future is the way to go for South African cricket, um, personally. Um, uh, I don't think he is... At that level with a bat, like when you'll say big hundreds, fifties, if we're in trouble and we lose wickets. I don't think that's Simon Armour, but I do think he's the player that can take us into that space where 
we can post the winning total like he did in the first innings it, it's it's definitely an interesting question and it's worth some serious consideration because that's the one spot where you where you feel like that player can be a game changer for you right you know like a 50 with the bat or you know three or four wickets with the ball and you know they could turn things around my my question for Dean Elgar and I guess Simon Harmer would be, you know, how does how does Simon perform in the high belt? You know, how does he do on seeming wickets? You know, because if he can if he can produce three or four wickets on on a seeming track, then suddenly he's in contention, right? Because what's happened so far is that with Keshav Maharaj being your, your lead spinner, and we saw how he was used during the India series, it, you know, it wasn't ideal, you know, and um, it didn't do justice to his talent. And um, I wasn't a fan of the way he was used. Uh, but, you know, if, as, as Dean Elga said in his press conference, you know, he wants players to be ruthless and, you know, he wants to make brave decisions and so on. And I think, you know, trying Simon Harmer at, at seven, in the absence of Marco Janssen is is a brave option. You know, see how he does on on a seeming wicket. Because you also can't forget that he's he's taken four hundred and ninety one wickets between his last test and the test match at at Kingsley. And he hasn't done that on ranked turners. He's done that on wickets that are traditionally more conducive to to swing bowling. So mm. certainly the talent is there, but here obviously he's going to be up against international opposition. So if if anything I think Boucher and and Elgar should try him in seeming conditions, see how he fares, and and then take that decision. And obviously, mm-hmm. his his batting can can be given that much importance as well. Yeah, what I think Simon Ramos did really well this year in the in the time that he's played for the Titans is finding something in the wicket when there isn't much there. Um, and I think that that is something that he's done well. I think Keshav is also very good at that. Um, we saw in New Zealand, for example. Um, so there are times when we think, oh, but why are we picking Keshav? And we con- we continuously picking Keshav in the team consistently, even though he doesn't bowl. Like for the example against India, uh, Wanderers and and Centurion, um, he hardly was u- utilized. And, and he, we know that he has an ability with the bat. And Simon Armour maybe tips him a little bit with the bat. That's what puts him ahead. But what I think the partnership that duo the two of them together on both ends is what causes teams problems because simon armor shows that if he's spinning the ball one way and and keshav is spinning the ball the other way it can really cause problems for the opposition like we saw it can really um bog them down and throttle them in a way and 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 so that they they can't move forward they can't get singles they can't get off strike and that's what builds pressure and you can even having two having the off spinner is important because you could utilize him with someone else, you know. Um, I think he and Marco Janssen might be able to be an amazing pair. I would like to see how that works, you know. Someone coming in from the one end, bombing it in, moving the ball, and then Simon Armour on the other end, really holding one end and, and causing problems. So I would like to also see that, perhaps, um, how he works with the seamers on the other end. And that is also something that we need to see because he was really good when Keshav was bowling on the other end. It was almost like Keshav was causing the 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 pressure on the one end and then Simon Armour taking the wickets on the other and then vice versa in the second time around where Skeshav took seven wickets. So they both took seven wickets in the match, which is very important to know. Um, and it was good to see that they w- what their ability is with the ball. But the bat is the main thing um, to, to discuss this. If you're picking both, something has to give with the bat. You need to be able to, to hold your bat. That's why... I really thought whenever they were going to speak to spinners in the past, I mean, George Linder has shown what he can do with a bat. And I was hoping that George in test cricket would focus a lot on his batting so that he can get into this team as a batter as well. Um, and and on, because the, then in those situations, you don't need to use him as a bowler if, if that's the case. You can use him as a, as a batter alone. I mean, looking for those type of all-rounders. And I, I think Bryce Parsons in the future could be that person because he bats top order, top three, and he spins a little bit. So if you need him, he's available. Now, I don't know, but Markram, in the, in, Markram is that guy for us in, in, in white ball cricket. But I think in red ball cricket, it could possibly be someone like um, 
someone like Bryce Parsons in the future or, or someone else. There are plenty of all-rounders coming through that might not be as consistent as we were hoping for. Um, like Michal Pretorius hasn't necessarily been at the same level that he was last season or towards the uh, or at the start of the season. Um, Gerald Kutsia has not necessarily shown what he's capable of the bat fully yet. Um, we've seen flashes of brilliance of Gerald Kutsia. Um, you know, I know it's difficult for these youngsters to play all three formats straight out of school. You know, you're playing all three formats instantly. You're not focusing on one. That's where I feel that more research needs to go into this with regards to earmarking players for the future and understanding who are the ones that are, have the potential to be a T20 specialist or white ball specialist and which ones have the ability to be a red ball specialist first before they move into T20 or, or, or ODI cricket. Um, so I, I want that to be happening from a younger age already when the Kaya majority weeks are happening already. I would hope that the, 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 the chief selectors would be there to watch and scout and see what is the next in line. Um, I'm going to read this out from Werner. Uh, because I think, and I would like you to comment on this as well, Aditya, but if this is the case, um, and we do pick Armour and Keshav, this is how Werner says you would line up. So, Alga, Irvia, Peterson, Bavuma, Rickleton. Okay, let me just check who's been dropped here. Alga, Irvia, Peterson, Bavuma, Rickleton, Verena, um, Janssen, Harma, Maharaj, Sarabada, Nokia, and Gidi. Nokia or in Gidi, in for Harma on, on pacey seeming wickets. It's a good balance. Um, no Markram here, no Rassi here. So we've, that's that's out of the way. So you, you're settling on this particular batting lineup from one to six. It looks decent. It looks very balanced. Um, there's pace here. There's a left armor. There's two spinners. There's good batting. It, it's a, it, it looks like a very good team, this lineup. Uh, so I'm all for it to test this out. Obviously, we could test this out right away, actually. In fact, we could... Um, just just by replacing like for likes in a way. So we need a new ball bowler, and I think maybe a Clinton Steerman or or the Pavlin comes in for Nokia. And then Rabada's not available currently. So we've got Lazard Williams in that position. You've got Maharaj at nine. We can have Harmer. And then at number seven, we can either go, we can either move Harmer up one and play another seamer, or we could leave it as is and then play an extra batter. Uh, or we could give Mulder another opportunity. So those are the options that we have available. At least there's options. At least we're not sitting here, this is all we have, and there's nothing more, and the only way from here is down. So at least it's the only way from here is up. Uh, so Simon Armour is causing good headaches over here. What do you think of this lineup, and what would you change over here, Aditya? Um, I, I, I like this lineup. Um, it's, I, you know, uh, actually, my... My concern is not about the lineup. I think the, the lineup is perfect. It's it's exactly what I would have done, you know, except I think Aiden Markham would probably be in my 12. Uh, but my concern is with the captaincy because Dean Alga in his press conference said that, you know, in an ideal situation, he'd like to be playing the high world. And, you know, the, the DNA of South African cricket is, you know, bowling that fast, you know, accurate seeming sort of, sort of bowling and that's something that you know the south african south that south african cricket has thrived on over the years and my concern is that you play harma and maharaj in the same team there and i i don't know how many overs they'd get whether they'd bowl in tandem you know so how they'd be used is is a bigger question mark for me because that's that's probably been i think if there's if there's ever been a question mark on on elga's captaincy in my view it's probably been that you know in the way that he used maharaj in that india series and in the high world would he use maharaj and harma in a similar manner is is the question right because if he's doing if he's doing the same thing then then there's no point you know take once you know then then don't play don't play spinner at all um but if you do, then you know make sure that you use them well and and aggressively. Yeah, and we've already seen that South Africa not, or at least Boucher doesn't like to play without a spinner. So we already know that. Lorenzo is put um, his team on. He says in spin spin friendly conditions. Alga, Saral, KP, Babuma. He says Rassi at five, six Rickleton. So he's dropped Verena as the wicket keeper. Um, seven Armour, um, Maharaj at eight KG. 10 Nokia and 11 Giri. I think it's quite harsh on 
someone like Kyle Verena, um to drop him so soon in his career as a test cricketer. Yes, he's shown signs of signs of weaknesses um, in in certain aspects. Um, his technique is a little bit wavy in certain aspects. But for a guy that's already scored a test hundred in his, and and in difficult in a, against a difficult opponent, I think he needs a little bit of an extra run. I don't think we're gonna we should make the, the same mistakes as we used to. Um, for me, uh, Russ, uh, both Carl and and Rickerton should be out, should be playing, and I think we can move on with the likes of Rassi in Test cricket, perhaps. Um, that could be an option in the future, but at, at right now, I don't think they would do that. And for me, if it's between Rickerton and 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 Calvarena, I think personally that Calvarena is the bigger wicket keeper, and I would go with Calvarena. Calvarena really has a century to his name, and yes, Rickerton's a very good player, and I want to see him have more opportunities, but. Unfortunately, I, I just think that it would be unfair on Calvarino to drop him right now. Aditya, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I don't want to pressure Rickleton with the bat either. You know, I, have, I mean, I don't want to pressure uh, Rickleton with the gloves. You know, let him figure out his batting. I think he, Rickleton is, you know, he's in great form. He's high on confidence. You know, I'd, I'd want him to, to score big. You know, the additional pressure of, uh, of having the gloves on and, um, you know, the, um, I don't want to say burden, but, you know, it would challenge his fitness in a way that um, we don't want, you know, we, we need to in the batter a lot more. And um, Kyle is doing well. I think he's, he's, he's okay. You know, he just made what, 136, one test match ago. So that's, that's perfectly fine. You know, I don't think, Two innings, you know, on a difficult surface will should uh, should increase the pressure on him. I won't drop Verena straight away, obviously, but for me, his technique is still to be found wanting in England versus Anderson, Broad, and Wilkes. We're gonna have to wait but and that see. That can be said for that can be said for, for anybody, also, right? <laughs> that can be said for anybody in the top six. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm, we we haven't seen KP necessarily against. Um, full on, full on. Okay, man, it's India. But, 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 maybe never mind. I, I'll take that back. But KP is showing good signs. <sighs> Saddle, we, we don't know how these players are going to play against England. Uh, that we have to wait and see. I don't. I, I think it's a bit too, too soon for us to judge that because, yeah, there is some, but, some, some, some technical issues with Carl. But I think the only way he's going to work that out right, right now is by working it out in the test arena. I think it's something that can be solved here i don't think carl's a, a a case where you say you need to send him back to domestic cricket i don't think that is the case i don't think he's going to learn in this particular occasion i don't think he's going to learn what he needs to learn in domestic cricket because there's no way he's going to face three quality seamers coming at him on you know, swinging conditions bowling at him he's never going to see that in domestic cricket ever i don't think like, ever, he's not going to we... face that sort of pressure also right like there's a yeah, certain pressure sure. that comes with playing in foreign conditions against bowlers, you know, who've collectively got over 1,500 wickets and, and all that. But, you know, even beyond that, if, look, we can question their techniques against English mm -hmm. bowlers, but those same questions also need to be applied yeah. in home conditions in Durban, mm -hmm. you know, where, sure, they haven't played there in three years, but, yeah. you know, these are home conditions. You know, sure, surely we can ask for more from from batters, right? Yeah. yeah. A bit big, good point, but that makes it easier, in my opinion. Because the fact that he's going out in the same way means it's easier for you to diagnose the issue and solve it. So that's a good thing. Unlike Aiden Markram, who is a puzzle at the moment. You don't know how he's gonna go out. <laughs> like, but he's gonna get he gets he gets himself out every time. You don't know how, but it but he but it happens. So I think it's a little bit easier to see. I agree with you guys in the live chat saying that Rassi won't get dropped. I don't think he will. Um, uh, I think that Rassi will be picked. And I think Aiden will be picked too. I don't think they... I think when they come back into the team, they'll be picked. Uh, uh, even though we don't agree with it, guys, as of, as of maybe as us as a fan base over here, we don't maybe agree on that decision. But I think that's what most likely will happen. We will most likely see Rassi still stay here until he's done um and all that spot even though i think that now is the right time to put the youngsters in 
and let them learn. I think now is the right time. For me, um, this test championship, we, yes, we are doing well in this test championship so far. Um, the start of this test championship is way better than the last one. Um, so we, we're doing a lot better and we're looking a lot more competitive. Like with, the, with, with Simon Armour back into the mix, I feel a lot more comfortable going to India. Um, especially with the certain players, the way they've handled themselves against spin. Our game against spin has improved quite a bit. And I feel a lot more comfortable to go to, to India and go play India. I'm not I'm not as worried anymore because we've got two spinning options. That's what that that's what India always had against us that we didn't have. We didn't have that second option that could really be lethal. We've had the Bray Shamsi that did okay when he played there. We had some other um, spinners that were George Linder that did did well there as well. Now that we've got Simon Armour as well, it's decent. Um, so I would like to see us one day. When we go play in India and play Test cricket in India, are we are we fair there or in Sri Lanka one day, uh, some sometime soon when when Tests do happen there? I would like to see that. Um, but England guys, that's going to be the proper Test because now it's two teams that are in transition facing each other, going head to head. It's going to be an interesting one uh, because Simon Arm has been good in England in the county scene. Uh, he needs to now replicate that. If he's going to play in England, and it's looking more likely that that possibly could be the the option that they go with Aditya. Do what is your thoughts there? Because I know it's got to do with conditions, but at the moment they're talking about playing Simon Armour regardless of conditions. Um, yeah, look, and that's certainly that you you have to consider, right? Because. You know, you can't keep yo-yoing a player in and out of the team based on conditions. That's going to dent his confidence. You know, if quality, like no no one ever says don't play a fast bowler on a spinning track in India. You know, you still play some fast bowlers. No one has a five spinner lineup, right? So similarly, if there's a quality if there's a quality spinner, he's going to find a way. Like Shane Warne, he found a way to spin the ball at the gap. You know, Simon Harmer is good enough to spin the ball in England. He's got 491 wickets there. He can bowl. And um, I'd say the same about um, Keshav as well. Look, uh, Ravinder Jadeja was was brilliant for India against England. And there's no reason that Maharaj and, and Harmer can't replicate that. Khalid has Beddingham left South Africa forever to play for England? Okay, I'll let me explain to you the situation. We bro we broke the story about um, David Beddingham on our on our channel. I spoke to David directly. Um, you do know that um, Zaire spoke to another journalist has been on the channel before. He spoke to the agent. I spoke to David directly. So I got the message directly from David. David's situation was he was upset about the fact that there was no contact from the selectors from Victor, no one spoke to him about his future in South African cricket. Now, that was the main um, the main issue. Um, and I think that was the uh, the problem. Aditya, you, if you're off, that's awesome. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. I'll end off the show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Sleep well, bro. Um, so with regards to, 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 to Beddingham, what I was told by him, and now I feel, I think I, I think I feel more freely now to talk about it now that it's over and all the hype is gone. Um, Beddingham told me that he feels that he would he would play for England if they offer him a, a position. If, if England come to him and tell him that he's going that they want him to play for England, he'll play. That's whoever contacts him first. I don't think he's completely he hasn't completely um, ruled out the fact for South Africa, but South Africa's never contacted him. So I think the chances of him playing for South Africa are slim. Um, I don't think that. That Victor Impasang is going to contact him anytime soon, especially that the way that he left as well. He left um, before Victor had an opportunity to speak to him at T20 cricket. Um, but I don't blame David because David didn't know that Victor wanted to speak to him in the first place. So that has there was a bit of miscommunication there, quite a lot of miscommunication over there. So I don't think that David Beddingham will play for South Africa unless we go and speak to him and, and, and strike a deal. If England offer him a position to play international cricket, he's going to play international cricket for England. And I don't think he's against that idea if the offer's on the table. If South Africa don't come to him and they offer him the position, I think he will pick England. I think if both offer him a, a position, I'm pretty sure that David will play pick for South Africa. If he had to pick between England and South Africa, I'm 
I would I would hope that he would pick South Africa over England. Um, but that's maybe wishful thinking. I don't know. Um, that I never asked him. I never asked him whether whether if both came in for him, who he, who he would pick. But um, he's eligible. He will be eligible to play for England. And if England come not calling, he won't be ashamed to do it. He won't look back. He would go and do it. So that's the situation with David Bettingham. Um, you pick four bowlers. If two of them happen to be spinners, then back them. Kyle kept exceptionally well in Durban when the ball was spinning. Really happy to see that. Yes, because his wicketkeeping coach is excellent, um, especially when it comes to spin spin um, coaching. He, he focuses on that as well and deviation. So his wicketkeeping coach is excellent and he was coached really well. So uh, that's that's also a major factor of why Kyle Brennan is as good as he is. Kyle, uh, the agent and the player contradicted themselves embarrassingly. They didn't really contradict themselves. Um, the David, David just, David said the same thing. It's just that the agent communicated it differently. It sounded more from the agent side, like they are choosing to, to pick that option. Whereas the main, and, and, and the agent mainly spoke about what the hard facts were. So he spoke about. This is the situation. He's eligible. He's going to play for. He's going to make himself eligible to play for England. That's what the agent spoke about. But when David spoke to me, David obviously was more emotional when he spoke to me because we go back quite a bit, and he obviously opened up to me a lot more about the emotions that he was feeling. It was more about how he was feeling emotionally rather than logically about making the decision. So he spoke a lot about how upset he was and how hurt he was because he's always wanted to play for South Africa and the fact that even after a good SAA tour, even after a good domestic season, he still hasn't gotten picked, hasn't even been approached for SAA tour. So it's, it's a tough one to swallow when you know how talented a batter is. Kyle, without a doubt, is the best we could keep in the country. His club with exceptional, but that alone won't keep him in the side. Harley Quinny. <laughs> what about Quinny? Calverain, Cal keeping is good. Um, batting needs improvement. Um, it's amazing how when someone can someone can score hundred in New Zealand and still people will be criticizing them and saying you look here they still need to improve and that's good. Um, the fact that there's room for improvement even though he's performed is a good thing I think because I think that now that he plays the more he plays domestic. See, Cal's the type of guy in my opinion. I've always seen it like this. He's a, he's a very good learner from when he, when he experiences something and he goes out in the middle, he learns quite well from his mistakes and he's a very hard worker. So I'm I'm almost 150% sure that Calvary is working hard on the technique, on his technique and on the on, on the shortcomings that he has. Hard with COVID restrictions relaxing around the world, getting to some sort of formality. Will you see Quentin back again? Wow. <sighs> I have no clue, eh? Um, based on what he told us in his press release, etc., when he retired from Test Cricket, it seemed like he wanted to be more for his family, and I don't know if Test Cricket tours and etc. is going to be good for him to have spent time with his family, um, unless the family is coming with him on tours. Harley is the Harley Quinny is the best we could keep in South Africa. Um, I have an opinion on this one. So from a technical perspective, from a technical aspect as a wicketkeeper, I believe Calvarain is better with regards to the basics. When it comes to instinctive flashiness and and um, accent, um, electric, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, and being electrifying behind the stumps, diving around amazing catches, etc. From a flashy perspective, from a flair perspective, that's the word I'm looking for. Quinn is a better keeper than Carl when it comes to flair. But I think from a, if you're looking at it from a textbook wicket keeping perspective, um, Carl has a lot less, a lot less bad habits than Carl, uh, than, than Quinny de Kock, Um, I think in his keeping, that's just me maybe over analyzing it a little bit more. Um, I, I think that Carl Verena from a technical perspective is better um, when it comes to that. Uh, Kyle is a good pressure absorber. You would do well in England. 
I, I think he would do one in England against the Seamers, actually. But Ryan's keeping has been phenomenal. His, his pro problem is foot movement. And it's funny because he's a foot move. He moves his feet behind the stumps. <laughs> so I don't know why he's struggling with his foot movement at the, in, in, at the crease um, when he's batting. Something's bogging him down a little bit. What's wrong with the person victim? With this person victim, saying he really needs uh, a patriotic South African national. Is he really a patriotic South African national? Yes, I, I think Victor Pensang. I don't think it's all bad with Victor. Now, maybe that's because I have a personal relationship with Victor and we speak a lot and we speak, not a lot, but we speak when we see each other um, and we, we sit down and we can hold a good conversation. And 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 because I go back with him when he was selected for the under-19s and Kai Mujolo weeks, etc., we spent a lot of time together. Maybe... Because of that, I have a little bit more of an insight into what he is really like and what he's thinking of. I don't think that it's Victor alone. I think it's the entire, from director of cricket through to the coach. So director of cricket, um, the, the communication between all of them is the problem. Uh, and also, I think that there are going to be certain selections that that Victor's going to maybe want that Boucher might not want in his team. So Victor wouldn't then have to switch around and then have to obviously communicate. Um, so I don't think it's fair to put everything on Victor, but there is some blame for certain aspects that he could have done better at. And remember, he's new to the job. Uh, it's not like he's been in the job for 50,000 years. So I think maybe give him also some, maybe some time, maybe with a different director in of cricket that is a little bit more hands-on with the entire structure. Maybe Victor would be a lot better then with a little bit of more guidance above him. Eve is not good enough, even after scoring under New Zealand. Rickerton should be opening the batting. Um, I don't know about that necessarily, because in four day cricket, Rickerton hasn't opened as much as batting down the order. So it's very difficult for some to ask someone to suddenly just open in the longer format if they haven't done it consistently at domestic cricket. David Beddingham, uh, the waste of a highly talented player, I feel for him. But he's better square of the wicket. He's expecting bowlers to serve in. In his area, David issue is unfortunate. Harley, bring Yanaman on the show. I will give him a message and ask him sometime if he if he's if he's willing to come on the show. Why Dwayne Pretorius has been neglected for that number seven only test? Because Dwayne Pretorius has not necessarily put up the numbers domestically in four-day cricket consistently. And I think that's the reason why. Dwayne's shown amazing skill to, to show his ability with the ball. In, in white ball cricket, and his pace suits it. But if he's going to be rolling 128 in test cricket, they're going to punish him, I think, in my opinion. The problem is that missing communication with a player whom they are looking at as an upcoming prospect. Yes, the, there is problems with that. I agree. In my opinion, short guys don't need so much footwork, more balance. Maybe we're coaching, got it wrong with Tien as the brain. Um, Shewag, I think TB, you mean Tien as the brain. Who's TB? Well, oh, Temba Bavuma. Coaching had got it wrong with Temba Bavuma. Shaywag, Lara, Tenduka, short guys. Not a lot of footwork. Sorry, I got that completely wrong, that acronym. I'm talking about Verena. Yes, I know. Um, Hardy suggests, Vic, suggests Victor about David. Maybe you'll have a change of heart. I've spoken to him about David already, to be honest. Actually, in fact, I'm the one that told him about David. <laughs> I phoned him. He didn't know that David was going to England early. I actually called him to tell him that. Um, well, I spoke to him. I got quotes from, from from Victor as well. I spoke to him about it. And I said, why? And I asked him why. And he and explained the reason. He said he's not... A, he, Victor told me personally that he... It's not that he was neglecting David. He was planning to speak to him in PE because he thought that if all the players were going to be in PE for the, for the CCSAT penny challenge, he wasn't aware that David Beddingham was leaving early. I remember that Victor Mpatsang is not on social media either. So he doesn't see all the breaking news stories like all of us. Um, so he has to be told by someone in his circles that this is the case. Um, and we don't know. So, so I know they were looking at David. But he was thinking of David Bidding, which obviously was the top run scorer, but he was hoping to speak with him at the CSA 220 Challenge. But David had to leave early, um, unfortunately, to go and play in the UK early for Durham. So he didn't have that opportunity to speak to him. And by that time, it was a little bit too late. 
because already people were speaking about it all over the place and calling out David to tell his side of the story. So by that time, it was way too late. Calvarena and Joshua Silva for me, is currently the best wicket keepers in the world. Wow, great statement by Lorenzo. What is David Benningham? Please give the update. I already gave the update about David Benningham. You can watch back the video. I'm not going to say it again. Hope county cricket will help in Vian's batting. I hope so too. That's going to be very cool to see that happening. I'm hope because I think that the coaching, I think that the coaching in county cricket is a lot more in depth and detailed than it is in South Africa. Perhaps I don't know. Maybe because they have more coaches available um, to them that are getting paid massive salaries as well. So sometimes, majority of them, some of the best coaches in the world. So I think they will be a little bit more hands-on with regards to identifying or the issue immediately you see the lions have plenty of players that can just replace vian Mulde if he's not performing um so it's, it's a tough one whereas in county cricket they've spent a lot of money on him now let's see if they can help him with his technique smash the like button please guys talent is there what's up trevor you hit the nail on the head i think it's the fear of failure that is really getting to him at the moment um maybe i should give him a call and just chat to him off record when a player moves to england does he not require noc from csa um i'm not 100 percent sure if that's the if that is the case it po possibly could be the case um be back. i must check that i'm not 100 percent sure if Mulder is performing as an all-rounder is should go with armor as all around in this um irrespective of conditions in most countries pitch um, takes turn from day three to four onwards should Tiernus and Klaassen be included in ODI side now? They are doing great in current ODI competition. Um, possibly, uh, but so are our batters currently in ODI cricket. So is there need for changing something when it doesn't need to be changed? That is the true question. Because Yanaman, Quinny, Temba, Rassi and Aiden have been quite a solid op top five. And David Miller as well, top six has been quite solid. So I don't think there's necessarily a need to change anything right now. Um, unless there's some serious issues down the line. Just imagine what we had a SA18 touring in right now. Exactly, Lorenzo. And I spoke to I spoke to the SA coach, Mali Bongo Maketa at Newlands when he was there for a meeting. I had a chat with him and I asked him, please can't you this organ? He said it's not in his hands, unfortunately. Like he's asked for more, he's going, he's gonna continuously ask for more. But unfortunately, not his in it's not in his hands. And I'm hoping that now the restrictions have 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 dropped a little bit, COVID's easing out, that we're going to see a lot more SAA tours down the line. Um, how did you have to play mediator between Beringham and Victor talk about his future in South Africa? Yeah, if they were both here at the same venue at the same time, maybe I can play mediator between them. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button, comment, share, subscribe, click that notification bell for all future videos. Uh, don't forget to also become a patron today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. And also download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every single month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Champions League football is on tonight, guys. So if you guys are football fans, have fun and enjoying that. Peace.